Um, it's great to be with you, Joe, and it's great to be with all of you. So thank you so much for giving me the opportunity today to talk a little bit about better sharing and brighter future. So I'm going to try and talk for about 10 minutes and then take some questions and we'll take it from there. So, um, so firstly, um, I want to talk a little bit about Creative Commons, um, a little bit about better sharing and a little bit about the future. So um, just to introduce Creative Commons, who we are, um, we're an international nonprofit dedicated to building a thriving commons of shared knowledge and culture. What we do and why we do it, well, we are behind the legal tools, which are called licenses, and we're creating a globally recognised alternative to the model of all rights reserved to copyright. So why is open sharing important? Open sharing advances universal access to knowledge and culture. Open sharing in the public interest fosters creativity, innovation and collaboration. And open sharing is an act of solidarity. And in our new strategy, which was passed by our board in December, the theme of how we can do open sharing better was the central theme of our new strategy. And that's something I wanted to share with you all uh, today within the short time I have with you. So, so three areas I thought I would explore very briefly, as there are three huge areas, but, um, but, but something about open sharing and why it's important. If we take COVID and what we've just gone, well, going through, gone through, um, I'm getting vaccinated on Friday, which I'm hugely excited about. But if we think about what the pandemic has taught us, we've seen more sharing of academic research to allow us to look at how we can develop vaccines. We've seen when education, when schools have been shut, we've seen how important open education resources are to trying to put education online for teachers and students, how important that's been. And we've also seen how inequity has been risen because of when people don't have access to technology or access to a report that came out last week in Scotland about the, not just the digital division, but the data division. So how can we show through the experience of the pandemic why open sharing is so important and how we can do that better? And then we go to the, the greatest challenge of our time, climate, that the, uh, the, 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 the climate crisis that we're experiencing as well and with COP26, which is coming up in November, what can we do to really address the issue of the climate emergency and climate change? And when we think certainly at Creative Commons about what is so important, the open sharing of research and the open sharing of data in order to deal with our climate emergency is absolutely critical if we want to develop the solutions and develop those uh, and challenge the, the, the problems that we face, we have to develop the solutions to those. So this is where open sharing really, really matters. And then when we go to artificial intelligence and thinking about copyright, thinking about the norms and rules, and somebody struck me last week about how if we think today that, that more reading today is conducting is conducted by robots than is conducted by humans and the change and the pivot that we're going through, how can we make sure that better open sharing it addresses some of the challenges we face with AI? So we think about COVID and the experience of the pandemic. We think about climate and the challenges we have. We think about AI, open sharing and doing it better has to be critical to the success and critical to our futures. Now, when we move to the next slide, better open sharing, the sharing paradox, licensed stewardship and the public domain. And when I'm thinking about the sharing paradox, I wanted to share with you a couple of pictures from where I live. So I live in a place called Dunfermline. I don't know if many of you know this, it's just north of Edinburgh. But I live in Dunfermline. Dunfermline's famous for a couple of things. It's the it's the resting place of the, the famous Scottish King Robert the Bruce. But it's also the birthplace of Andrew Carnegie, who came back with his wealth and funded this public park that you see in the picture with the, the, the orange sandstone castle-like building. And he gave this to the people of Dunfermline. When he was a small child, he stood at the gates of the Laird's land and couldn't enter it. It was a wall, literally a walled garden. He couldn't go in. But he came back and to the people of Dunfermline, he gave this public space, this public domain, this physical space so that everyone can enjoy it and is enjoyed to today. And then I turn to the other picture in this slide, which is 
uh, the picture of an Amazon warehouse, which is a couple of miles from the building, or that sand building, the, 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 the building in the other picture. And I use this as a contrast because we're living today in, 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 the, in the virtual world where we are um, having challenges, shall we say, around what that um, dom domain, that public domain, how we ensure that the public domain is our space, it's for our future and how we preserve and what we do with it. And I use a contrast between the two because I wanted to just very much highlight in my, you know, literally a mile away from where I am sitting, these two very, very different worlds. And how are we going to address some of these challenges? So the sharing paradox I wanted to just touch upon was this, that we're sharing more than we've ever done before, you know, in all sorts of social media, in all these different places and spaces. But how are we sharing in the public interest? Is there not a difference between sharing in social media, which I keep thinking about as being showing and telling rather than sharing in the public interest? How are we going to make sure that the sharing the public interest, the sharing to make sure we find the vaccines to tackle uh, this, the problem that we've just faced with the pandemic, to share the resources to make sure kids are educated in schools when they go virtual due to the pandemic. How are we going to make sure there is this differentiation between how we share for the public interest and what is not sharing in the public interest. And it takes me to the shopping trolley. And I share this picture with you because when we think about the public and private spaces, I think that the shopping trolley dilemma of that private metallic, and I think for some of you call it a shopping cart, that's put in these public, just neglected, put there, and no one takes responsibility. It's somebody else's thing to do. And I keep thinking about how, when we're looking at the public spaces, private uh, interests, the public domain, which is the commons that we can enjoy in terms of public parks in the physical world, how can we ensure when it comes to the digital world that we're addressing the shopping trolley problem? And then I wanted to just touch upon how do we get how do you get involved in terms of better open sharing by joining our community platform at Creative Commons, which is an which are in education, copyright and in GLAM. Thinking about our three key priorities from our strategy, which is advocacy, license innovation and capacity building. Thinking about how we take people on the journey of understanding how the licenses that we have, which helps put things in the commons, helps put things in the public domain through our training and our boot camps and our webinars, how you can get involved with those. Thinking about the Open Minds podcast, where we have different people coming together to share thoughts and ideas about the open ecosystem in its biggest form, but also how are we working together across places and spaces to build on the public domain and build on the commons. And then to remind everybody about the CC Summit, which is between the 20th to 24th of September. I know many of you in this call today are really interested in open and interested in open data and want to make a difference in this world of us today. And I think that how we can all come together uh, is, is important. And our uh, summit in September gives us another opportunity. But just to end, we've got the future in terms of we celebrate 20 years of Creative Commons and it's no surprise that a number of organisations this year are celebrating their 20th anniversaries and some, you know, Wiki Wikipedia has just celebrated 20 years. Um, other organisations are celebrating 20 years this year. And there was something in the water 20 years ago why so many open organisations were created and today celebrate 20 years. But it gives you an opportunity to not just think what you've achieved over the past 20 years, but what you can do in the next 20 years. And this is where better open sharing becomes a really key theme. We addressed the issue of failed sharing 20 years ago, and now today we want to do open sharing better. We are still the stewards of the licenses, and those licenses are pivotal. It's almost like when you think about a tree, that the trunk of the tree are the licenses and the things that blossom out of that, whether it's open education, 
open glam, our ambitions around open science and open climate, what we can do and make a difference. But the licenses are pivotal to that. And that's why I touched upon the open glam, open science and open education. So I have kept to my very short time scale of talking a little bit about better open sharing. I'd love to hear what you think. And um, I'm really keen to take any questions. And I think I have a grand eight minutes in my 20 minutes that I was given to be able to do this. So, Joe, how would we like to, to take this forward? So thanks to everyone for listening and I look forward to hearing your thoughts. Thank you very much for that, Catherine, and for um, you have stayed very well within your time, which is fantastic. It gives us lots of opportunity to have a little bit more discussion. Great. So um, I'm looking at the questions that have been asked by Super. our audience and that people are voting, so I'll ask them in order. Um, the first question is, uh, can you talk a little bit about the ethics involved in sharing? For example, are there, are there things that should not be shared, in your opinion? So this is a really great question because we've done a lot of thinking about where were we 20 years ago and where are we today? And there's something about, um, take the example of traditional knowledge and how 20 years ago in the debate that we were having when we were creating the licenses, and clearly I've been in the role as CEO just for eight months, but when we've been talking to people who are involved you know, 20 years ago, the issues around traditional knowledge, issues around knowledge that perhaps should be more respected, but it's a religious artifact that shouldn't, that there's all of that debate is fairly recent and fairly new. And we need to think about that. And then the ethics around uh, and Creative Commons was was caught up in that about when you know images were shared and were used, for example, in the training of AI, which then went on um, to to do some quite nasty things in terms of facial recognition, which that was never the intent. So there's something about how we have to learn from the past 20 years and think about what our challenges are today. And this theme of better open sharing really tries to um, give us that opportunity to start to think more deeply about the challenges of today, because if we're going to address those things of today, we need to think about what that is and looks like for the next 20 years as well. So I think that is a really important question. Yes, there are, and there's, uh, there's one of our podcasts that Coraline has done, which I think really addresses some of the issues around, uh, around that ethical open source question, which I think you might find interesting. So please look at our podcast and have a listen in. I think you would find that um, useful. Is that helpful? Thank you very much, Catherine. No That's a great answer. Um, okay, I've got one other question, which is like you're you're not immediately new to your role, but I know you've been in, in your role for less than a year. Yes. I was wondering what your your impression is of the of the Creative Commons community and how what maybe what you've learned and reflected yeah. in your time and you know how much is that up of made of people who are actively behind and supporting the mission and how much of it is is people who are just making use of this in what they're doing and is there an awareness of the the, the wider aims do you find so you know i i feel so privileged joe after coming as you said you know we worked together at open knowledge and the international community that was part of the open knowledge foundation and to come to creative commons which has also got an international community and i just remember a few weeks well, it's probably about a month ago is one day I took a call in the morning to talk to the Hong Kong chapter. At lunchtime, I was talking to the Ugandan chapter and the evening I was talking to the New Zealand chapter. And, you know, where in a day would you be kind of covering Hong Kong, Uganda and New Zealand? And so this, this, this you know, variety of people who are all part of this common cause about how to share knowledge and culture and make things more open for the common good and the public interest. It's so empowering. So I think that, you know, um, I, I, I have to, you know, the, the, the community that, is, that makes up part of Creative Commons have been so welcoming to me and are so um, passionate it is to make that difference and um as i say i find that so inspiring joe and i learn 
each person I speak to, I learn something else from. So when I was talking to the Peruvian chap, to just, you know, you, you can tell by my accent and I've, when I've just been discussing where I live in Dunfermline, tomorrow's the Scottish Parliament elections. And I was talking to my Peruvian chapter, who were telling me there were 15 candidates in their presidential election. And I was kind of like 15 candidates in your presidential election and five are tied for that top, you know, there's all sorts of issues in, in politics, as you know, but just being able to, to go on a call, find out what's happening in a local area, discuss things and, and 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 try and understand more about what are the pressing problems that are, are facing um our community and how we open up culture and knowledge for the public good i hope that helps does that answer your question joe oh you're in, yeah. you're in. <laughs> That's oh, <better>. yeah. <laughs> so yeah so thank you very much Catherine. yes and we've got time for one more question i think <laughs> Um, we've got three minutes left. So we had a great keynote yesterday from the COVID tracking team. Yes. How can we harness the enthusiasm and success of COVID related sharing for sharing more broadly? And thank you, Carl, for that question. Yeah, that's a great question, Carol. We were really proud at Creative Commons for um, helping instigate and being part of the Open COVID pledge, which we announced uh, yesterday was going to be stewarded by um, uh, PGIP at Washington um, University in, in DC. So we're so proud of the work we did to try and open up um, those, you know, pay, you know, trying to open up knowledge and culture to be able to address that pressing problem that we're facing. Now, why I would say the learning is that, you know, we're in a climate emergency. We need to take our learning from what we did with the Open COVID Pledge to apply that to climate and to start to see this emergency just as important as what we've just gone through in the pandemic to try and make sure that we have all that research and all that data in an open format that can be shared, that can be re reused, and therefore we can work together with this most pressing problem that affects humanity. And I think that's maybe where I would place the learning moving forward and what we can do. But Cara, I think it's just so important that we we'll, that we take as much about the benefits of open sharing and apply that to the, the latest challenge that we have, which is the climate emergency. Thank you very much. Okay, we have about 30 seconds left, Catherine. So I'm going to think we're going to end there, but thank oh. you very much. That's perfect timing. There are there are several more questions. Oh, I, so th these are being moved over into Slack. So super. Um, and I'll answer, but look, thank you. And I want to say, I love the llama and I just want to share with you my picture of a llama to say thank you because we love llamas. <laughs>